Welcome to the COVID Diaries interviews funded by the New Hampshire Humanities Collaborative and the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation. Monique Dukas interviews Sarah Dukas. Hi, this is Monique Dukas and I'm here with Sarah today who happens to be my youngest daughter. Um, and she agreed to tell me her story for the COVID Diaries project that I'm doing with Great Bay. And uh, she agreed to tell her story. So hi, Sarah. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for doing it. And, and I didn't say what your story might be about, but I think what I wanted to ask you about today was what it's like to be a mom of a first grader who totally just started school last year in kindergarten and just started to get that down and all of a sudden had to go to full on remote learning. So basically, right. yeah, I'd love to hear that story. So it's been a bit of a whirlwind. Um, she was very excited for kindergarten, got to be in school and really was thriving and loving all the new friends and every kind of social aspect. And then in March, as we all know, um, school shut down. And then I was all of a sudden doing remote learning with her. And there were little to no meetings with the teachers. And it was really just full on me teaching her all of a sudden as a full on job. Like I already, you know, parent them and everything, but school is just one of those things that I'm not you know, qualified for. So I had a lot of pressure with that, gave yeah. myself the pressure that is. Mm -hmm. So did that. And then summer. And, and I came. Ask you, sorry, I shouldn't ever interrupt you. I'm so sorry. It's okay. But I just wanted to ask you, like, that must have been because you probably were going to say how hard it was, but that must have been really hard at first. With well, Carrie. with Jax, especially too, oh, yeah. like mm -hmm. I'm in there and having to, you know, teach her how to do these math problems and everything. And Jax is in the other room, you know, wanting attention. Um, so it was a hard, it was a hard balance. Mm -hmm. So summer came and went and they gave us the option to do remote or in school with masks, social distancing, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Um I made the decision to go remote because for one, I felt like the schools were gonna shut back down again and I would have to um, change my schedule all around and just, so I figured if I just start with the plan of going full on remote mm -hmm. and keep her and just fix my schedule around that, mm -hmm. um, that's what we would do, um, which was a hard decision to make because the social aspect, but I also feel like you know, wearing a mask, nobody enjoys doing it. And for eight straight hours, and if I can give her what I need, and her teacher can work with her. And, you know, it's been more steady now, she's very used to it now. Mm -hmm. But it's still, it's hard to think of being used to not socially interacting at I such know. a young age. I bet. And um, yeah, that's the other thing is, um, she had to get better at the computer because at first you had to be there showing her how to do right. every single thing. But right? now she's she's definitely come a long way for sure. And you were working at the time, weren't you? Didn't you have to leave your job? Yeah, so I was working at Little Miss Sophie's and then, you know, I can't do a morning shift because mm -hmm. I have to be home with someone has to be home with her and, and Jax, yes. um, which... For as far as Jax goes, you know, I could have potentially set him up for daycare and had them both out of the house and mm -hmm. we could both work a nine to five or, you know, not nine to five, but like seven to three or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. um, but now it's like I have a limited yeah. amount of time where I can go to work and it's just, it's been difficult, mm -hmm. but we're adjusting, unfortunately you know, hopefully not for too long, because next year it would be both of them in school, yeah. Kyrie in second grade and Jackson kindergarten. And it's like we could have a normal life, but I just <laughs> kind of don't, don't know. know. But I but I bet it's been a lot. And then you had to go through the whole um, 
unemployment thing when so right. many people were filing, right? Um, that must have been a nightmare too. Well, it actually, it wasn't too awful for me. Um, it was like the first couple weeks where everything was getting figured out and everything like that. But um, that wasn't that awful. I mean, I just filed on time and stuff like that, but it was getting back to work and making those adjustments and like having to be yeah. so much more aware all the time and like because it's like it's not just your life it's everybody you know it's just a it's not it's not hard. fun yeah it's been hard on everybody I think that's why it's good to get these stories right so that like right. someday down the road once when, when people want to know because it is history right people want to know what it was like being a mom of two small kids one of them in their first grade and kindergarten yeah. when it happened and like kindergarten especially it just like you know she was thriving so much and just I, I just mainly feel bad for her but she's dealing with it very that's well. right because it happened when she was in kindergarten right yeah that's right because it was last March so um so but you're back to work now yep uh, well, now I'm actually in Florida, um, which that's a whole nother thing. Um, my Pepe, mm -hmm. your dad, passed, mm -hmm. and I wanted to go see him when he was sick, but I couldn't take the risk in getting him more sick by having, you know, being in contact with so many people, even though I'm following the guidelines, yeah. it's still a risky thing with somebody that's already got failing health. So it's like, do you go see him now or do you mm -hmm. wait? And then it's like, it, it just all happened so fast. So we drove the family and I drove up or down. I always say up um, to Florida uh, mm -hmm. during a blizzard mm -hmm. <laughs> and just yeah. like the stops along the way. It's just like everything, you know, it's a, everything's interrupted by COVID mm -hmm. in one way or another. Everything's like, so no normal now. store trip. Everything's just out of whack. Mm -hmm. everything's different right like having like the thought of having to go to his wake and services and and wearing a mask and it just like that is a whole different social aspect like it's bizarre to be around everybody that you know when everyone in such a time like this mm -hmm. and not even to be able to see their whole faces yeah I know that's crazy isn't it Right. It is. And with, I bet some of the people you work with, here's a funny little fact. Some of the people you work with, you may still not have seen them without their masks yet. And it's mm. fun, funny what your it's imagination like you, does. Right. <laughs> you, you, you never expect it to look like what it looks like <laughs> the rest yeah. of their face. It's kind of like a uh, radio <clears throat> personality that you always hear. Right. Yeah. And you and see them in see person. Them. Yeah. And you're always very surprised, right? Right. Well, I think you've been doing an amazing job. And and I know it has to be so incredibly hard because you didn't sign up to be, you signed up to be mom, obviously. Right. And of right. course, you're a teacher as a mom, but you didn't right. sign up to be full-time teacher and full-time mom, right? Right. Yeah. And, and I bet it is so hard when she needs you and then you're trying to keep jacks up. like making yeah oh, making geez. macaroni and cheese for ja or like doing something else for jacks and then it's like come quick and it's like oh gotta drop everything and run upstairs as fast as i can to help her with whatever she needs help with but she generally is very self-sufficient now mm -hmm. um, so how long she sometimes you gets stuck mm -hmm. and you still have to help her sometimes but yeah how but long do you like, think it I'm sorry. Sorry. No, you go. You ask your, <laughs> you ask your question. <laughs> I just wanted to know, like, how long you think it took her to really get pretty good at it. Obviously, Honestly, it's still been a new um, it probably took maybe a month of the new the new school year, mm -hmm. uh, where last year it was less, a lot less structured, and um, it right. was like there wasn't much teacher interaction, but. She's got a very strict, it's like a regular school schedule. She has, you know, snack times and they're, too, you know, they're timed. She's doing these Zoom meetings. She needs help with personal work sometimes mm -hmm. or like a password that she can't remember mm -hmm. or, you know, just like navigating a little bit. 
but um, mainly it's it's like, how do I do this? She might have missed some instruction or mm. needs help figuring it out. And um, it, I mean, I wouldn't say, I think it probably takes all together only like an hour and a half of my time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like all together. It's not like I have to sit there in the class with her or anything. That's actually exactly what the teacher doesn't want you to do because mm -hmm. then it makes her learn less and wonder, like want the answer from me rather than figuring it out herself. Yeah, that makes good but, sense. Whereas at first you kind of had to be there all the I time. I had to, right, right. There was so many questions, right? Right. Um, and that's the other thing too, maybe that like, so you've seen the whole thing evolve, right? Because when it first happened, like you said, she was in kindergarten and all the teachers had to figure out what to do right. like instantly. Come, come so together that, with this giant yeah. plan right so that must right. have been super hard for them so it makes sense and also she was in kindergarten so of and, course right yeah. right and then you have the whole aspect of the teacher like how much it must stink to be mm -hmm. like in a position like that where you're trying to grab all your students attention over yeah. like it must be like frustrating at times and, mm -hmm. and then you don't have the you know teachers are very compassionate to their kids at school and they they love them and they mm -hmm. develop a special relationship with them um it just is a lot different via know, internet so with cool. all the other students all in the same you know google classroom right but, so that's what they do like a but they like, like raise hands and stuff like that um so it's like when the classroom's going and mm -hmm. they're in the it's a google meet they don't they don't use zoom okay um but it's just like we know when to sign on and then mm -hmm. you just join in to, it's just the same type concept and then they have the ability to like raise their hands and um and they're you know, all they on video muted. yeah they stay muted okay so that way there's not because like you can hear a lot of house background a lot of the time and just bet. like dogs and what whatever right um Kyrie has a nice quiet room though she's got her bedroom upstairs she's got it I set up a little classroom in her room with whiteboard mm -hmm. a map and the desk and books and all that and right. set it up so she felt like she was in a real classroom and that's yeah. awesome so everybody's totally had to completely adapt and here's the amazing thing though like it seems so unadaptable at first like oh my god how are we ever going to do this but you do right right and Kyrie's learning and she's reading now and she has learned a lot it's um so you think she's flourishing is, she's still flourishing but mm -hmm. I just miss the social aspect for her like I feel like in some in some way some time down the road it's just gonna affect her you know like not yeah. having those core yeah things. it must be harder for uh only children right because right, I mean, right. at least when you have siblings you right. learn about sharing and mm -hmm. and you definitely learn how to be a bully sometimes right right <laughs> when you have siblings um for sure yeah well what else did I want to ask you I think there was something else but oh, yeah so I know what I wanted to know I'm sorry is what what's a typical day like um I know certain days of the week she's going to have gym and do other things so and let's say like today that, sorry no you, you <laughs> go ahead you want to tell me a typical day whatever day she so, likes the best that actually just changed um so apparently there's only two teachers for art and gym it, at first it was like um it was art gym tech library um and i'm missing one music mm -hmm. and the schedule just changed so now she has tech two times a week when she's already technologically you know prepared in my opinion like mm -hmm. she's navigating through it and everything and then to have that two times a week and then gym she's not having until april and Aww. same thing with music because the teachers are in the classrooms and they can't switch back and forth between schools but i, I don't really understand because they have two schools with their I, it's oh. it's something that i don't fully understand i just know that it changed and now she's right. not having her favorite um so subjects. it's totally changed but as of right now 
um, what happened? Did they open New Hampshire schools back up and now you have the choice again? So they, they opened them in the beginning, right? And right. I had the choice remote or right. full on. There wasn't mm -hmm. a half and half option like some schools were giving. Right. Um, but I chose remote. Right. And then the whole school shut down right. until I want to say it was like, it was maybe a month ago they opened back up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I could have changed my mind then and like switched her to in school, but she's already so established with her classmates and her teacher and stuff that I, again, still didn't want to for the for the reason in the beginning anyway, but yeah, um, it's understandable and you don't really know <laughs> what's going to happen. So it's better to have her doing one thing or the other right. instead of like every two months bouncing school. Yeah, I think even the thing, or, right. I mean, I feel like it would be, be difficult to adapt, even if I told, if I decided, if I had the option to do half in, half out. Mm -hmm. I think that's still too much. Like, yeah, you, it's it's just too much for your learning little brain to get yeah. used to. There's like, I agree. No, and and there's so much change constantly. Right. Like you are always having to get used to some kind of new change with it. And like like we said, I. I'm sure maybe somebody's doing a teacher interview. I'd like to hear what they have to say. Right, sure yeah, I, I would be very interested to hear that. And the beginning of her um, her year with Miss Giles, um, there was a, a parent that lashed out on her and like in front of, it was when it was still really fresh. Like we were, I was helping her all the time at this point. Mm -hmm. um, and the te the 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 dad came on and just started like oh, no. being so disrespectful and just like mean That's all because crazy. he didn't listen to the instructions and she's like Cooper I cannot tell you five times the instructions I need you to listen the first time because it's just taking away from the day and the people who are listening mm -hmm. and then like doing what teachers do like yeah, when and you dad put came them on in and their care out. and the dad came on and flipped out so I messaged her and was like that was uncalled for you know I think you're doing a great job oh, and you she know appreciated that yeah um wow crazy but yeah. right yeah well thank you Sarah is there anything that you want to add that like maybe I should have no, asked I you? We, or... I think we hit all the bases. Yeah, I, I think it's great. Thank you for sharing it. Thank you for being a part of this COVID Diaries project that we're doing. Special thanks to the Community College System of New Hampshire. Faculty mentors, Krista Zoba, Sally Bachelaney, Kara Shinoy, and Paula Del Bonis Platt along with Don DeAngelis of New Hampshire Public Television, PBS, the University of New Hampshire, the Huge Manities Project at the University of New Hampshire, and its co-directors, Krista Law Jackman and Molly Campbell, Leslie Barber at the Community College System of New Hampshire, audio editor, William Forrest Platt, copyright, New Hampshire Humanities Collaborative and CCSNH 2021.